Over the past five days, we have been discussing about fundamental questions regarding our future. The discussions were controversial, emotional, difficult, dividing, uniting, eyes opening, and most of all, important. A lot of words have been said. Having followed all these discussions and having seen hundreds of pictures on social media, I can tell you that there's one thing which stands out in all those photos and in all those discussions. Something which doesn't need any words. You can just look around you in this room. Just have a look. Look at all those faces full of motivation and inspiration. Look at the essential reason why we are all here. In order to work together, sometimes we just, we just need to take a step back, not say anything, and just look at each other. Look at the, what is happening in the faces of the people in front of us. For some things, no words are needed. Thank you for all your amazing work. Uh, thank you so much for your great work. She did a lot for social media, so we can thank her a lot. And now I call the ECI for a sm small presentation of the project to come on stage and present technical point. Yes. Well, if you, if you agree, because we are doing, after all, we are going to have a small activity which is not linked about yesterday or whatsoever, so. Do we have a, okay, cool. So media people are welcome again. Okay, so uh, ECI. Okay, cool. Thank you. So please, you can come here. Hey Smell, I'm Marvin. A few months ago, I had an idea. I was at so many strikes against climate crisis and still no political action followed. However, I don't need to tell you that we need political action now. So I found a way to directly influence European law, a European Citizens Initiative, short ECI. With it, citizens can write a law proposal, and if they get one million signatures, change European law. So I decided to do this, but I couldn't do this alone. Climate change is a global problem that influences all of us and that's why we have to work together and act on European basis. Not just each individual among us has to act in climate emergency, but our politicians need to do so as well. That's why we launched a European Citizen Initiative. Now we need all of you who are citizens of the European Union 
and eligible to vote to sign this initiative and obligate the EU to take actions upon our demands. We demand that the European Union is a goal to prevent the 1,5 grad Celsius air warming. We demand that the European Union shall update their NDC to minus 80% by 2030, reach net zero by 2035 and adjust their European climate legislation accordingly. We demand an ajustement à la frontière de l'Union européenne en fonction du gaz à effet de serre et du carbone. We demand que todos los políticos se dirijan a la ciudadanía para la crisis climática de forma clara y para todos los canales posibles. We demand to act on climate emergency now. Is this working? Hello. So, hi everybody. Um, my name is Jesse, and I joined the ECI club from the beginning. And not only because I was bored at school, well, also, but also because I really believed in this project. Because this was such a great opportunity for all of us. We worked together with the whole ECI team, all members of Fridays for Future, and we wanted to support the movement Fridays for Future, and we wanted to put pressure on the European Union. And we, we really believe that with the ECI, we can do this. But as Marvin said, we cannot do this alone. And we're not demanding of any of you to, that you need to jump into the train, but all of you who want to, who want to help us, please do. I think this is such a great opportunity for all of us. And I know this week there has been lots of emotions and stuff about different things, what we should support, what we not should support. And this is meant to support Fridays for Future. So please, if you really believe in this, just as I do, just as Marvin does, just as we as a whole team do, you can do these things, like you can join us, subscribe to the newsletter, support, contact supporters like us. But the most important is we need to collect signatures within a year. If we manage to do that, which would be so amazing, then we can try to get climate justice into the European law. That would be like amazing. So what, what I need you to do, if you want to, tell everyone about it. Tell your parents, your grandparents, and even your most annoying teacher, I know you hate them, but tell them about it. Tell everyone about it, and together we can get to the million signatures and we can put the pressure on the European law. Thank you. Oh, and now there's a Q&A if you have questions after this amazing speech. Where can I sign it? Uh, so for now, the, we have registered it, but we are waiting for an answer uh, from the European Commission. So for now, you cannot sign it yet. But by the beginning of September, around the 23rd, if the Commission accepts the ECI, then you can start collecting signatures on the website. So there is the link, and there, you, there will be a place where you can sign. And you can only sign if you are over 18. So I know that many of you are under 18, but you can still, I mean, you can still ask your parents and everyone you know. Other questions? Yes. So last question. You with the blue shirt. Can we get a mic? I felt a little bit frustrated because how Marvin presented it, it looks like that when we reach one million signature, automatically the law is passed. Could you please explain all of us the real procedure because it's a little bit more complicated. Thank you. Uh, could you just, 
I didn't really understand the question. Could you repeat it, please? How Marvin presented the European Citizens Initiative, it looked like to me that when we reach one million signature, then the law is automatically passed, but the process is quite a bit complicated. Could you explain all of us how does it work? Thank you. Okay, so um, we will have one year to collect all these signatures. And if we manage to do that, then it will be sent to, like the European Commission will actually read it and focus on it. So there will be a public hearing we have selected seven people who represent the committee, so they will go to the European Commission and present the European initi Citizens Initiative. And afterwards, the European Commission will write an official statement where they will declare if they decide to make a law of it, if they decide to discuss it any further, and if they say that they cannot make a law out of it, they will still have to discuss it and they will still have to justify their decision. Is it clear enough? Thank you so much for this uh, presentation. And if you have any more questions, you can ask them directly. Lukina, don't you think we should start a super cool activity now? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that would be great. Uh, but let me think, what can we do? I feel we haven't talked much about how the way we mobilized 2.4 million people on March 15th. Yeah, I mean, how did it happen? That's, <laughs> that's crazy. These people who organize the strikes are really crazy, don't you think so? I'm really wondering what's their special secret. You should ask them. What's your special secret? <laughs> so, okay, the activity that we propose now is... <laughs> okay, uh, so in front of you, you all have uh, one piece of paper. So we would like you to think individually and do this activity in silence to really reflect on what's happened and how we can... Okay, just take your sheet of paper and then I'll continue. So, the idea is to reflect on what's worked and to create a nice book where we can put all of these wonderful ideas on how to mobilize and the question is, what story narrative do we need to mobilize 20 million people on the streets? So take 10 minutes. You can do really as you want. So you can create a poem, you can draw, you can make some folding, you can be creative with your paper, you can do some airplanes, I'm joking. Um, so really do what you want and we really want you to be in a silent, quiet mood. Close your eyes if you need it and take these 10 minutes. Okay, time is up. Um, I need you to put on your sheet of paper a plus if you agree that we gather your ID in one document which will be published on the website. If you don't want to, put a minus. Somewhere on the paper. Okay, I think you have enough time to put minus or plus. So next step. You will move in group of five and you will share your ideas in five minutes. This is short, but it's to be brief and to summarize quickly what you thought about. So it's like kind of one minute per person. You can move in group of five.
30 more seconds.
I know these discussions are very interesting, but you will have lunch time to finish them. Please, people, we need to move on. Thank you so much. So uh, now to gather all of the paper, we are going to proceed this way. So you will uh, work by line. So all of the plus will come to there for this line and all of the minus will come there. Then for this part here, the plus come there and the minus come here. The plus come there and the minus, you write plus or minus on your paper, that's what I mean. And the minus come here, plus and minus, please make the way. Okay, that wasn't clear. So, for each line, for example, for that line, all of the plus will come at here, and all of the minus will come here. Okay? Please, I need your attention. Thank you. Great. So, uh, is it done, the process of plus, minus? We just need to order them. Is it fine? Great, cool. So, um, first, I would like to explain how the rest of the morning will go. So now, you, um, when we've finished here, there are some um, workshops of activities who are prepared uh, to prepare the strike of this afternoon, creating songs, painting banners, this kind of cool stuff. Um, so when you're finished, you can go and have a look on the program table and go in the room where you want to put your energy. If you don't feel so, take a break, speak to people. That's a chilling time. And then at 11, I want all of you to be there at 11, please, in that room. And we will finish the morning together in this room. Um, and then we will go and have lunch uh, at 12 at the Bananas building as usual. And then at 2 p.m. we will start moving to the city center using the public transport. So we will start like at 2, so as we go by waves and you know, we don't overload the public transport. Okay, does everyone, is everything clear for the rest of the morning and the day? Great. So um, now I just want to call uh, somebody on stage uh, Chris Showman, he just wants to explain really quickly something. Hello, there was a lot of energy just now creating ideas and things we can do to grow to 20 million. If you want to do this a little bit more, we're meeting now in 316, 316 in the room, and we're going to brainstorm for another hour to see if we can get to 50 million. So just a quick raise of hands. Does anybody want to join? We just want to do this if we have enough people. Fantastic. So room 316, right after the session, till 11. Thanks. Thank you so much for your attention and this great activity. Okay, we will begin. First of all, um, just can one person from each city that want to host the next meeting go in this corner to Jonas? Yeah, the cities that have wrote, that have written uh, their application on the sheet outside. What? Okay. So, uh, one person for each city that wrote outside on the sheet their application for the next summer meeting, for next meeting, should go to Jonas here in the corner. And now I give the word to the 
video reporter group of the meeting. They will present you some of their work they have done this week. Uh, we're just missing a few people from the group, so um, should I start anyways? Okay, let's start. Um, so my name is Mathis, good morning, and I was part of the video group reporter for The Smile. Uh, our goal was to involve participants in the process of creating videos about this summit in order to report as closely as possible on what they have experienced during this week, because after all, they're in the best position to understand what's important about this summit and how they felt during the week. However, since video production is a very long and demanding process, we received the help of a team of experimented coaches who taught us the basics of video filming and editing. Therefore, all of us have been able to improve and learn new skills by being part of the Video Reporter Workgroup. We wanted to show both the working and social atmospheres of the meeting, to show how different people and activities tried to reach the goal of the meeting. We recorded interviews, reports, vox pops, and tried to provide coverage of open forums, plenary session, and work groups. Some of the short videos we, are, we created are already av available online. You can search them for them on YouTube. And we also worked on a final video as a way to conclude the week, to sum up everything that happened. And we are going to show it to you now. I hope you enjoy it. Yes, what? Uh, yes, um, we just need to say to the people, can we turn, on, turn off the light? Great, thanks. The purpose of the summer meeting in Lausanne was to bring together members of the Fridays for Future movement to increase coordination and communication on a European level. Mi chiamo Mattia La Face, uh, sono un ragazzo italiano, abito a Torino, ho 18 anni. I'm involved in Fridays for Future actions since uh, January. We got 30,000 pe um, people in, in the 15th of March and 10,000 on the 20, uh, 24th of, of May. I'm really in, in, interested in saving my, my future and the future that the, pe the people I love and uh, that's, I think that it's the more, the, 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 the more difficult challenge of our time. I'm Katia Folman, I'm from Israel. It took about 30 hours to get here with one train and two trains. I first got involved with Fridays for Future when I met with the organizing member of my country um, during the first protest that we had outside of the parliament. It uh, was something I always wanted to do as an environmentalist and as an activist. I was always passionate about doing things that just need to be done. Uh, the future of our planet, our species, the future generations. These are things that we can't just wait for other people to do. This is the time that we have to act. And if we don't do anything about it, no one will. My name is Christoph, 
and I'm from Luxembourg. I'm Daisy. Daisy, where are you from? England. I'm Jantina from the Netherlands. Hi, my name is Anna from Croatia. I'm Alice, I'm from Geneva. My name is Tirsha Exton. I'm from Ireland. Today we have discussed a lot, plenary assembly, open forum. The main theme was to have a basic democratic structure. Open forums are spaces of discussion for various topics. Every participant can propose the subjects. Those are collected on a dashboard. Then anyone can vote the ones that prefer, and the things that are the most interesting. And then during the decision, there is a collectively analysis on the current situation about the topic. It's about the whole complexities to make it democratic because, uh, as you say, it has to be very decentralized. I agree with you, Stephen, that the politicians um, at first they again they will deny it, but after like uh, maybe like five years or something, most countries uh, in Europe will have accepted it. Like just drawing on your first point, and then the second question is what does it look like? Then we try to find what can be a needle situation that we want to reach. I actually would a little bit disagree because I think names really matter for campaignability and mobilization. There are already countries which depend on energy sources of other countries. That means that in this structure probably nothing changes, but the energy that is being produced is cleaner. So uh, I think that it's a uh, well, positive decision. Uh, in any way. And then the end of the, the focus has moved on how to have to act to get this ideal situation. I do feel like we need something like the climate movement rallies around, which feels urgent but doable and social and economic. Like that is the thing, and that for me is what this is and why we need to organize around it, not because it's the end goal. <laughs> So, I am Teresa Rosa Sebastian. I am originally from India, Kerala. But I am from the Irish delegation group. I have been here for the last few years. The smile for me, uh, it really inspired me, gave me new ideas because I think what was really important was meeting new other people and learning that some things that worked for them might have worked for me or some things that worked for me but didn't work for them. And it was a really good space for me to share ideas with them because, for example, I learned an idea from one of the Greek uh, representatives. She told me about a fast fashion movement that I thought I could bring home to Ireland. I'm involved in the working strategy group and I'm part of the demands group. So part of that I realized the process it takes to develop demands for an international group. Upstairs we were working with a strategic work group and we split it into the three main groups which represents and work upon the three main uh, fields of work, so uh, strategic, uh, values of principle and demands. I was working with the strategic work groups and we also divided amongst ourselves into four groups and we were working on what was proposed during the first plenary and we were just trying to see all the cons, all the pros and all the doubts that we expressed and try to make a solution and uh, synthesize them so that we can produce something that can be uh, uh, voted upon consensus and everyone can agree on. Fun, communication, and love. <laughs> National solidarity revolution. Diverse, uh, interesting, and fun. Exciting, new, and climate change. Fun, exciting, educative. Fun, energetic, community. Fun, tasty food, and just great crack. Invigorating. Collaborative. Inspirational. O meu nome é Bianca, sou de Portugal, mais especificamente de Lisboa, e demorei dois dias a vir. O meu nome é Mihaela, e sou de Moldova. Și mi-au trebuit două zile și jumătate ca să ajung din Chișinău până în Lauza. Mă lăni Rini, îmi văd în Elada, că mă pire tăi seri și mă pădă mere să ne arătă Mărtilozani. We organize protests, we organize artistic type of 
movements. In Lisbon, we do the global strikes. We did two already. We also did die-ins, and we started doing night watches. So basically, we spent four nights uh, every Friday for one month in front of the parliament. We would do uh, clothes swap events, book swap events, zero waste festivals, zero waste uh, concerts, plastic-free concerts. The goals of Fridays for Future as a movement are pretty vague, but also they're pretty like straightforward. One objective we have with Fridays for Future is ob obviously to raise awareness so that everyone knows how much of a climate crisis we have going on right now and so that they get involved and at least support us. We would like to achieve uh, social integration and uh, the society's consciousness on the environmental issue. The declaration of climate emergency then we want to have a citizens assembly in our country. Specifically in Greece, uh, we have already entered the parliament, we have passed our own vote. We need to make pressure for the government to make this a priority. And we want governments to tell the truth. Yes, really after the smile. <laughs> Basically, evening session when we get all together and sing and shout. We feel really that energy of human beings together for one single purpose. I think you guys, the team of the video team, so motivated. And so you are the guys who just um, participated in this forum and uh, you want to learn more, so the way that you take the camera and film everything. Hier soir, quand, après le souper, il y a beaucoup de personnes qui se sont réunies tous ensemble et puis qui ont un peu chanté. J'ai trouvé ça très amusant, très joli. our hands and started running towards each other because it made me feel like we were united and we can actually do something. My favorite moment of mine has been uh, meeting with different cultures. So. Playing ping pong with my friends. What do we want? What do we want? Climate justice! What do we want? Now! The oceans are rising and so are we. The oceans are rising and so are we. The oceans are rising and so are we. The oceans are rising. Please, now I wanted to ask for a big applause for the coaches of video team because of their hard work and because they have made this uh, masterpiece and they have worked so hard all night. So please, a big applause. Thank you so, so much for that beautiful video of the week. That was so nice. 
Um, so now, sorry, uh, I would like to welcome on stage uh, Benoit Franc. He's the vice director of the Sustainability Center of the University of Lausanne, and he would like to share a message. Thank you. I'm a vice director for sustainability, but not center. But any, anyway, dear participants, dear organization team, also dear colleagues of the University of Lausanne and other academic institutions, dear guests, my dear friends fighting for climate justice. What a week. When the Lausanne FFF team asked us uh, if we could support a Lausanne application for this summit, we didn't really think we had a chance at first. So what a surprise when we were chosen by you, us as a city, as an organization team, and as a university, to hold the first summit of your organization. For that, I want to thank you very much. Then, the organization team had to set up a one-week summit in a little over two months, whereas uh, we usually organize this type of event in at least a year. Among the organization team, no one had never done this before. And yet, at the rector said uh, on Monday morning, the rectorate of the University of Lausanne did not hesitate for more than 30 seconds before accepting this challenge. Why? Why? Because our institution aims to be a place where diversity is promoted and where civil society and scientists can meet. And also because we felt this summit would be a historic event. And I'm very proud to say that we were right. What you have shown us over the last five days is that you are able to make the difference, even if it was a very difficult process. You have, shown, you have shown us that you were able to write a strong declaration and you did it with something like 900 hands. Please don't, see, don't think that it's a simple thing to do, especially if you have never met before. It's a great job. If there was still one more argument needed to silence all those we, uh, who, see you, uh, who see in you sweet dreamers, unable to, to get to work, this summit is the one. Four. For many years, scientists have been sounding the climate alert and warning society that the limits of the biosphere may be exceeded. For many years, we at the University of Lausanne have been taking up the challenges of sustainability. And until recently, we were looked at either with distance or with contempt. And suddenly, since last summer broke all his records, since uh, Greta uh, started uh, her school strike, and since the young people here began to take to the street, what, we'd, we'd, what we had been saying for so long become audible. You know, there are a lot of people who don't understand why we take care of this, why we welcome you into our university. 
but you are just saying that society and governments should hear what scientists are saying about global warming and loss of biodiversity. How could a university not defend this? Finally, we, we must believe in what we know. Simply believe in what we know. So thank you, Greta, for launching the movement. And thank you to each of you for keeping, keeping it alive. You, you have met here in Lausanne for the first time, and the result is much more than the text you have produced. You have forged links, links between uh, people from uh, 38 different countries. You have put the greatest, the greatest challenge of our time on the political agenda. And you could be criticized for that and for not being free of contradictions. These reproaches come from people who do nothing. Remember that there is no human action without paradox. You did this summit. You guys are impressive. The University of Lausanne is very, 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 very proud to have welcomed you. And I'm quite sure we've done a pioneering work together. The University of Lausanne has put sustainability at the heart of its concern since 2011. We are doing our part as a research and teaching institution and as a territorial actor. It's a long and hard way, but we are gradually reducing our CO2 emissions in an absolute way. We still have a lot of work to do but we are improving our balance sheet every year. If we, on our small scale of a community of 25,000 people, succeed in doing so, why should a country like Switzerland not succeed? Why should a continent like Europe not succeed? Why can't we reach net zero emission as soon as possible? I'm not a politician, but I have uh, political responsibilities in this university. And I can tell you that when students push to change, it helps me a lot to get uh, projects across to my colleagues. I hope that politicians will soon understand that you are helping them a lot and that it is if they don't listen to you and to us that they can be afraid. I would like to warmly congratulate the organization team for all their work. Yeah, they deserve your applause. I saw, I saw all their fantastic job. Very well done. You, you were, I, I, I am impressed, really. And I, I want to thank you, all of you, once again for choosing Lausanne. And I hope long life to FFF Europe. And say you, see you later for the strike, OK? Thank you. Thank you so, so much for this speech, which is really inspiring. Thank you, and thank you again for the university for welcoming us here. That was an amazing and a huge support. 
Um, so if we are thinking about what's going to happen in the next months and if we want to meet again at some point, we need to see where we are going to meet. So um, Jonas will explain to you um, some details. Yeah, I know, I mean, this meeting is not even over and we are already thinking about the next one. But, um, I mean, the cli climate crisis is, didn't, isn't solved like in this one week, so I guess we need to meet again and have some great time together. Um, so how it's going to happen is, um, you might have seen this list out there, and it's crazy, like there are so many cities on there already. It seems like people are excited to host these events, um, which is great, right? And so how it will proceed is that you can still write yourself on this list and there will be a working group, as said yesterday, who will then um, take up this process and the, like, create a form where you can apply as your city and then they will choose as soon as possible when and where the next meetings are going to be. But, um, I mean, we already have some people here who would like to present their cities and make you excited about going there. I mean... Now you can just plan your holidays on like where you actually meet all the other climate strikers, right? So um, there are five cities who would like to present themselves today. Um, that's Torino, Kiev, Leipzig, um, Karlsruhe and Strasbourg together, um, Maastricht. And I would really like to welcome now um, Torino on the stage. So, hello everyone. We're here on stage to quickly present you all the Italian city of Turin as the possible venue for the next International Fridays for Future Summit. So, the question is, why should you choose Turin? We have four main points of strength. First, our favorable location. Second, an efficient sector of public transport. Third, a progressive university. And last but not least, a very supportive city council. So. First of all, uh, Turin's fair cent fairly central location makes it easy reachable from all over Europe by train or bus. And regarding the urban area, it's really well served, thanks to the efficient sector of public transport, which allows to reach the university infrastructures and buildings in short times. Regardless of its background history as an industrial city, nowadays, uh, Turing became a recognized academic, uh, academic city. Its facilities are therefore able to successfully host a great number of people in an event of such a scale. Not only will our university to support us because we're honored to meet, to host the next FFF meeting in Turin also because we have the support of the, the city council that has just declared the climate emergency in Turin and is really prepared to work with us in Turin locally to solve the climate crisis. And so that's a great point that will allow us to work better and better and better. Um, so, uh, we need to, to say you that if you want to come to Italy, we will uh, be very happy to host you and it will be a great occasion to discuss, discuss once again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, now we go Bit 100, some hundred kilometers into the, um, like into Eastern Europe, and I would like to welcome Kiev on stage. Hello, guys! Thank you so much for this like amazing five days together. It was really great, and we would like you to invite to have such meeting in Ukraine. It can be either Lviv or just like the Kiev, the capital of our country. And our people are really active right now, and they will be like really supported and with this event and solidarity of all of these like many countries will support our movement. Um, Ukraine is not the middle of the Western uh, 
Europe part, but this is the middle of the continent. So this is like the great possibility to also to invite that countries. They have like from the Asian side, um, so they can also participate and we can help them with this. Um, yeah, and also this is, would be really great to support for like European part of the countries, for the Eastern Europe countries, yeah. <laughs> And also Ukraine is super cheap and there are a lot of many Ukrainian organizations. <laughs> there are a lot of Ukrainian organizations who would be really happy to host and help us to organize this, uh, like this, such kind of meetings. So you are always welcome. We have a lot of parties and cheap food. So <laughs> thank you. Okay. Next, I would like to welcome Leipzig on the stage. So, there was actually a misunderstanding. It's not Leipzig, it's Dresden, <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, but why Dresden? So, as you might see, I don't have anything in front of me. I'm not as, as well prepared for a simple reason. I just wrote the proposal down pretty much 10 p.m. yesterday. Uh, but why did I do that? Um, one value we talked about a lot is inclusiveness. And I think for the next European summit, it's important that we don't increase the way people have to travel and we need to minimize it. And therefore, a location is really important. And I think uh, Dresden, because it's in Central Europe, would be a very nice location. Yeah. Um, also, what's, what's good about Dresden? The good thing, it's quite near to Poland and the Czech Republic. And I think for a European summit, it's important that we work together and the coordinators are not only from one nation, but the coordination can be from both Germany and the Czech Republic and Poland, everyone together. That would be amazing. Yes. And also, we have a university that's very open. I've already spoken to the regional group in Dresden. They would love to do it. And I hope you would love to do it too. Thank you. Awesome, thank you so much. And next we have like a joint uh, proposal from Karlsruhe and Strasbourg. Hi everyone. Uh, it's good? Okay. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Leo from Strasbourg in France. And I'm Raphael from Karlsruhe in Germany. We will present to you the joint proposal between Karlsruhe in Germany and Strasbourg in France. Both Karlsruhe and Strasbourg are both central European cities with a, a great infrastructure and great connections to other big European cities. Um, we uh, have uh, uh, together more than five universities which are very supportive and already um, had uh, sim uh, hosted similar conferences. And we are, uh, have many possibilities to coordinate a joint summit between uh, both cities. Both cities are just 40 minutes apart with the train. And we're very keen on watching out the details of the cooperation and to that our local groups as soon as possible. For Finance Fund, MP can invite a lot of participants each, which help to finance the cost. And last but not least, the strike. The strike will be held in front of the European Parliament, inviting thousands of people of all Europe. And we will say, Hey, European Union, why do you do anything? This is your last chance now. Thank you. Awesome, thank you so much. And last but not least, um, Maastricht from the Netherlands. Hi. Thank you. On behalf of the Dutch delegation, I would like to propose the next summit to be organized in the Netherlands. In 1992, the European Union was founded. 
It was founded in the Netherlands. It was founded in Maastricht. We are the future of Europe. We are deciding right here, right now, what the future of democracy looks like. We will decide if there will be a future at all. It is up to us. Do we act unitedly? Do we speak of hope instead of fear? This is our future. Let us meet in the center of Europe. There's plenty of vegan foods. Dutch people speak English pretty well. Public transport is well organized. In 1992, the European Union was founded. Three decades later, we are the ones. You are the ones who have the power. Europe is listening to us. Let them hear what we demand. Tell me, what do we want? When do we want it? Thank you. Thank you so much to all of you. Um, there are a lot more cities who would like, actually like to join, um, host it. And um, the process will be as open and transparent and as democratic as possible. And you will re receive some more information that very soon. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much for these presentations. That was nice. Um, one thing I would like to add uh, for the next people who will organize the meeting, please come and talk to us so as you don't need to start from nothing because we have many, many documents and we can give you advices because we just learn on the way, you know, and that could be something we can really share and we would really appreciate to share everything we've got from that meeting. Uh, now, coming back to technical organization points, uh, I let Elias explain it to you. Yes, I will give you some information about the afternoon. Uh, but just first, something that isn't written. If you have lost some code, some bottle or other stuff, there is a lost and found at the help desk. So you can take your stuff because you, uh, before you leave. So then now the lunch will be at 12 o'clock until 2 p.m. And after the lunch, we will move to Lausanne to the strike. Uh, you can move already before 2 p.m. That's no problem. <laughs> but you should move at latest on 1425 uh, with the subway here, because otherwise you will be a bit late for the strike or really last, last minute. Then the strike, the departure of the strike will be at the train station. And we think it's good if we all are in the front of the march together. So please come all of you in the front and we can do something together. The path of the strike will go from the train station down to the lake. And then down there, there will be some speeches. And after the speeches, there will be music and like a tiny festival. And it will be really great. We will see there are some prepared stuff. And just um, a reminder that this evening you will need tickets for sandwiches. There will be sandwiches down there. But don't forget your tickets for this. And one last information about accommodation, about returning time is as normal. And uh, one thing also, the Pontes will already be opened at 6 p.m. Because, uh, yes, yeah, some people have to get stuff there. Yeah. Okay, that was the information you need to know. Now I just think there are some people uh, to whom we didn't say thanks for this week. We thank the university. I'd like to thank them again. <laughs> <But> <laughs> uh, 
but we also need to thank the foundations that supported us, that allowed us to organize this, that allowed us to have food, that allowed us to have transport tickets and everything. So thank you to them. Thank you also to the authorities, to the city of Lausanne, um, which lent us the, the building of L'Etape and the canton of Vaux, the building of Pontes. So thank you to them. And thank you also to all volunteers they have been done amazing stuff. Volunteers in the kitchen, volunteers at the help desk, volunteers everywhere. And yeah, they really done great work this week. <laughs> and finally, I would like, like to say thank you to all of you all participants who came here. We had such a great time together. Thank you to all of you. I'm not gonna be going to be long because we would like to finish a plenary on time for the first time ever. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, just one last thing. Um, there are also the silent moments which are so important and this week have been just amazing just on the fact we were all in the present moments together and just keep in mind in, in, in your heart, in your memories for the rest of your life and that brings you the energy that you need in everyday life. Just remember about these moments that we spent and go and have great food now. 